Welcome to our series on the secrets of the abdomen and abdominal wall control. In this series, we discuss the function of our abdomen and abdominal wall in relation to back and pelvic problems, pelvic floor issues, breathing and long COVID and other problems that patients may encounter. In this final episode, we will talk about diastasis recti. Beware, the animations are for illustration and not anatomically correct. Diastasis recti is hot. On social media, there are numerous women with diastasis during pregnancy and either have questions or show how they got rid of their diastasis. Many of these pictures have little to do with diastasis and more with recovery from excessive postpartum abdominal space. But what exactly is diastasis recti? Well, that's a hard question. Diastasis recti is often considered as a too big distance between both vertical anterior abdominal muscles, the rectus muscles. But with diastasis you will also often see an abdominal bulging, making our bellies less attractive. And yes, men can develop diastasis too. It is usually assumed that diastasis occurs because the interrectus tissue, the linea alba, overstretches. That is why people want to measure the interrectus distance, poking fingers in abdomens, using calipers or ultrasound. And indeed, the interrectus distance varies strongly. But does this define diastasis? As for treatment, there are very distinct options. Most meticulous are the surgical interventions, using sutures or a mesh, which looks a bit like an orange net. These surgical options are not without risk. They do not always render the desired results and in time, meshes may cause all kinds of other problems. Abdominal training may seem a far less drastic solution. But is it possible to train tissue that is overstretched or doesn't it work that way? This illustration by Netter nicely shows a cross section of the anterior abdominal wall. But this drawing does not show how the abdominal wall works. The clip below shows the elastic behavior of the deep rectus fascia. When pulling up and down from head to toe, this tissue is very elastic, but in lateral direction the tissue is very rigid and firm. Could such firm tissue stretch that far to develop diastasis? But what else could happen then? Let's have a look at the bulging first. While this patient is lifting her leg, you clearly see the midline bulging when intra-abdominal pressure increases. The animation shows how the abdominal contact pushes the area of the linea alba outward between both rectus muscles. This can happen when the deep abdominal muscles function insufficiently. When the rectus muscles are pushed apart for a longer period of time, they will transfer laterally lose their function and may diminish. This slackens the fascia between the rectus muscles. The exact underlying mechanisms, stretching linea alba and or lateral sliding of the rectus muscles, needs further study. At the beginning and end point, the both rectus muscles lie close together. When contracting, they will approach each other and diminish the interrectus distance. Rectus activation seems important for correcting diastasis recti, but it's not that simple as it seems. When the rectus muscles contract and move towards each other, the tissue lying in between will become lax. This could cause more bulging when intra-abdominal pressure increases. According to Diane Lee and Paul Hodges, Contraction of the lateral abdominal muscles will put the linea alba under tension. However, this will also pull the rectus muscles apart again. An often used exercise for the rectus muscles is the curl up. However, when performing this exercise, intra-abdominal pressure increases. Rectus contracts, but is also being pushed laterally by the intra-abdominal pressure. Bulging may still occur. So, doing curl-ups is not the best exercise to treat diastasis. But diastasis can be controlled, as this patient shows. Adequate contraction of abdominal muscles may prevent bulging when intra-abdominal pressure increases, 
But how does she do it? The animation shows what happens in this single-sided ultrasound recording. When rectus abdominis contracts, the intra-abdominal pressure increases, causing linea alba to be pushed outward. Then, contracting the deep abdominal muscle, pulls the firm dorsal fascia laterally, causing linea alba to move inward. In this action, the fascia kind of slides around the rectus muscle. Actually, there are two mechanisms interacting with each other. First, rectus contraction controls interrectus distance, and second, transverse abdominus contraction pulls the dorsal fascia laterally, thus preventing bulging of the linea alba. So, if you want to control diastasis recti, then first address rectus abdominis and secondly train the deep abdominals. And this all well coordinated. And initially avoid building up too much intra-abdominal pressure, because this complicates abdominal wall control. Later in therapy, increasing abdominal pressure can be introduced to be able to exert more force. And, as this patient shows, even a massive diastasis can be controlled in this fashion, even at higher loads, as demonstrated here while she is lifting two legs at the same time. Keep in mind that diastasis recti usually does not always completely vanish. Pushing some fascia outward through the rectus muscles sometimes happens, even in fit bodies. This does not have to be problematic. So get your diastasis functionally under control and accept that sometimes some bulging may occur. And here we are at the end of our series on the abdomen and abdominal wall control. We hope these videos gave some food for thought and gave you an idea on how we work in the Spine and Joint Center. Let us know what you think of the videos. After the summer break, we'll start another series with new themes, and suggestions are always welcome. See you next time.